Welcome to the truth in this art. I am your host, Rob Lee. Thanks for listening, checking out this podcast, and you're in you're in for, for a good conversation on arts and culture. Today, I'm in conversation uh, with an artist who describes themselves as a brown boy representing the duality of both Latin and American culture and experiences through mass that can either misconceive or stereotype perceptions. Please welcome Sean Nine Lugo. Welcome to the podcast. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Absolutely. Me. Absolutely. I, I love the Carhartt, by the way. I'm going to have to get that color. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. as, a, as a dude with the baldy, it's it, it, it's December as we're recording this. And, you know, it's... You got you to gotta keep warm, though. You absolutely. Gotta... <laughs> so be, be, before we get super deep into the conversation, and we kind of started, like, the conversation. We did that sort of 20-minute, like, oh, okay, this is where we're at. Uh, intro chat. Uh, if you will... Um, could you, could you share like your story? Like what are some of those like early creative influences, you know, describe the type of work that you're, you're doing and what sort of creative practices that you engage in growing up? You know, I know it's a lot, but you know, and I'm, you know, welcome to tap back in, but start off with the story. Like what's your story? How'd you get started in, um, in art? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that's a long one. Uh, I'll, I'll cut it short. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just a dyslexic brown boy who was, uh, you know, brought up in New Jersey, uh, raised by a bunch of immigrant women. Father was incarcerated. Uh, mother had a drug problem. You know, grew up on food stamps. Uh, I wouldn't change any of it for the world. You know, and um, some of my earlier influences were uh, – were comics, huge, huge comic head growing up as a kid. Um, mostly the street. Uh, I, I was I was in the the street a lot when I was eight years old. My curfew was midnight. <laughs> um, I can't can't make this shit up. Uh, <laughs> and and mostly life, man. Uh, life's uh, I, I hate to curse, man, but life's a motherfucker, bro. You know what I mean? It has ups, it has downs. Um, I try to learn. I try to learn from all the downs, especially, and um, and help me grow, you know. Yeah. And, and that's 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 kind of that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and thank you because I think you know when you have sort of those like ups and downs, you're able to recognize one from the other based on the other. You know, like it's like, oh man, this really sucked. So when that next cool win happens, because it's all about balance, I think at the end of the day. So it's like, like, oh, local. yeah, it's like this sucked. This was great. Everything's even. <laughs> so, what would you say? You said your, you said comics are in there, what have you? And I, I now now just wrote a comics related question that's going to be a part of this rapid fire. But what are some of the um, like some of those creative practices you engaged in like early on? Was it like you know in terms of like street art? Was it like graffiti? Was it tagging? Uh, was it drawing? And having a sketchbook? Writing? What, what was it for you? Yeah, a lot of when when I was you know art art is is probably one of the best therapeutic outlets there is. All types of art, uh, whether it's playing music, writing poetry, whatever. You know? um, for me, uh, like drawing as a kid, you know, trying to replicate cartoons and and you know trying to draw Batman, and Spider Man, or whatever. Yeah. And as I got older, um, probably probably around like fifteen. Um, graffiti, graffiti was like everything, just being a, a little vandalist and, um, you know, uh, reading like the, the art of getting over by, uh, Steve Powers and, and like looking at his 10 rules, uh, of what not to do, you know, and, and then, uh, trying to master that and, uh, respect those rules and, uh, write on everything that I should and not write on the things I shouldn't, you know, and um, then eventually got arrested for it and realized it's the same for me, <laughs> but it, it took a while. It took a while. <laughs> this ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, it ain't for me, man. Uh, is, is, uh, is some people say, man, man, this ain't it. <laughs> so 
your so I became aware of you, I think, through one or two different memes, like either sort of that, you know, Jersey, New York, Philly connection, because I've been back and forth in that sort of area. And I'm doing this series uh, as, as we're talking now. Um, it'll probably be out by the time this episode drops. But doing the series that um, it's featuring a lot of Philadelphia artists and a lot of your work is, is there. So can you tell us more about that work and some of the main ideas you're trying to express? Yeah, like uh, my my street art, um, which I'm not huge on the term, but it's it's kind of hard not to call it anything else. It's art in the street. Um, for for me, uh, I paint animal heads on people. You know, uh, <laughs> to chop it up. Uh, best way to describe it. Um, I like playing off like the misconceptions that one have. Uh, so, uh, for me, portraits. They're nice, but if you see a face, uh, you pass judgment. And if you see an animal head on something, uh, you just, you, you throw all that judgment out the window. And, um, for, for what I do in the street, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, trying to create images, uh, that I enjoy or work with artists I enjoy and uh, collaborate with a lot of artists, especially in Philadelphia. Uh, I want to try to do more collaborating uh, all around the world. That'll be, that'll be uh, dope. I'm trying to work on that now. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We got some people on the list. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of just like uh, brightening people's day with, uh, I, I, I guess, you know, not to toot my own horn, but some nice imagery. You know, yeah, and so 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 with it because I've I've seen some pieces and I was like, this is this is great. It, it was giving me uh, like Ralph Lauren vibes because there's a lot of bears, a lot of bear heads. Oh, I was like, this thing. is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. How do you how do you pick like in, in terms of like you know there's there's a figure that you may relate to maybe someone that is let's say a celebrity or someone that is personal like when you're looking at sort of the the human component of one of the images how do you know like all right i'm gonna put a wolf head on this person or a unicorn or or, or a um a horse head on this person how do you come with that come to that um that idea it depends it depends on the image um and what you're trying to to come across when it comes to painting you could play more with that when it comes to uh collaborating uh with like a series i do in philadelphia I tell people like, you know, what, what do you want for your head to be? Like, what do you relate to? Like, what do you think? You know, some people say a bird, some people say, I want your bare head. You know, uh, some people give a request and I look at them and go, nah, that ain't it. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so then having conversations with people, you know, uh, um, I'll, I'll just wing it and be like, oh yeah, you know, maybe, maybe it would be cool if, if I gave you like a, a dog head or, you have a dog. Oh, send me a portrait of your dog. And then you recreate their body with, with their dog, you know, um, yeah. as the head. So a lot of that all depends. Uh, when it comes to paintings, you could really play with it, like narratives or whatever. Uh, I did a portrait of like two cops beating up a guy. And, um, you know, that, that was easy. Just to give the cop canine head, you know, because um, right away, you know, you got the, the you know, uh, the dogs that that sniff up the goodies so might as well uh you know use that as as uh the reference so i'm, I'm just gonna put this out there right manifesting right so alligator be an alligator right like just a long alligator face <laughs> or, or grizzly bear. yeah I, i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying <laughs> um so you, we we talked a little bit beforehand, so I, I want to dive back into like some of like maybe one that comes to mind, like a very like impactful experience that you know has inspired your work. Like you know, I'll say in doing this, you know, literally I always point to this got started because an orange colored asshole said something about Baltimore that I didn't like. That's really <laughs> what it was. And so, what would be something that's like a touchstone for you that? was like, oh, I need to really engage more in sort of this art, or I really need to approach my work in this way. What was one of those like impactful experiences in your life that really impacted your art? Oh man, o overall, I would just have to say like the struggle, la lucha, you know, like um, 
the downs. I've definitely had I've definitely had more downs um, than ups. The the ups are great, you know what I mean. But um, I'm I'm too I'm I guess I'm like a magnet when it comes to the downs sometimes, and it's 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 hard to just ignore, you know. So so one of the, like the main um, one of the main like things that inspire me and, and impact me when it, when it comes to my art is, is just like, the, it's just a struggle, you know, um, but life is hard. Uh, I'm not going to sit down and be like, Oh, because, you know, I have a house now, or, you know, um, I have a job and I have people who love me. Like any, at any moment, man, all that could go away. Yeah. Um, and I, and I'm not, I'm not blind. Uh, I've gone through shit. So, so for me, the, the struggle always, it, it like pushes me, you know, I, I'm, I might be fucked up in this sense, but like, uh, I, when I hear bad news, it motivates me mm-hmm. It like lights a fire under my ass. Um, I, I hate hearing it, but, but when you, you find out like someone's misfortune or, um, you know, someone, someone might be passing away or they got horrible news. And, and for me, it, it's, it's just fuel. It's like, I got to do it for them, you know. I get and, uh, I I don't know, uh, and maybe maybe it's my fucked up upbringing, but <laughs> it's 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 what it's what helps me. Like it, it really is. Um, for me, like the number one thing is is uh, you know um, the struggle just yeah. it impacts me in, in so many ways, you know. And and I always try to take uh, the positive from it. Yeah, I mean, you know, because because the, the the truth of the matter is, we're not always the most, uh, at least I think at times, not always the most vo- motivated or feeling creative or inspired. And someone sometimes it's those those things that are the the darker things that are in the back of your mind, like you know that you you get energy from you. You elicit like, yeah, I'm gonna do this because someone said I couldn't. I'm gonna do this out of spite. I'm gonna do this out of anger. And it's fuel potentially to to make work or at least to like get out and get to that spot. Cause there's times, especially when the temperatures drop, you're like, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm just gonna stay here a couple, you know, a couple more hours or whatever. Yeah, it's a lot of things that happen that can beat up on you emotionally, psychologically, whatever. And you're like, I don't know if I want to do anything, let alone doing my creative work. But there's something that that clicks like, oh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do this. Not everyone gets to do it and seeing other people's perhaps misfortunes and and things of the sort. And, you know, that's what happens with me. It's like it's spite sometimes like every now and again I'll hear, oh, you don't look like you do this. And I was like, what does that (laughs) even mean? You know, or, you know, you've done this or I may not be able to get a certain guest or conversation doesn't go the way that I would hope or as you you probably recognize this, people are very weird on social media and uh, and email. It's a lot of a lot of tough guys out there with weird messaging, and it's just it's just energy. <laughs> like Cat Williams said, if, if if you don't got enough haters, this, this is true. You, you need to get yourself some fucking haters. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is true. You need, you need you need to you need to push forth and get that. You know, we live in we live in weird times that. Uh, you know, everyone's quick to to be uh, keyboard uh, bullies, and yeah. uh, and you know you gotta you gotta like it, it, you know just not pay attention to the noise. Yeah, and you know I think you know there's been yeah I have to because I I kind of have that sort of motivation motivation around sort of the struggle and sort of the the L's the L's stick out more than the W's right and Always, I need to man. I need Always. to. I need to recognize those W's a bit more because like I said earlier, this year has been a pretty, you know, as we're recording, it's been a pretty good year in terms of those W's. And, you know, I'm very appreciative and, and very blessed for those opportunities, but I need to need to acknowledge them and feel them more versus moving on to the next thing for whatever reason that might be. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I, 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 I always tell myself that, you know, like look in the mirror and realize what you achieve. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't do it enough either. You know, I'm definitely guilty of it. You know, I definitely, uh, I'll always think of the, you know, having to get your tire fixed because you just got a flat and, and you know, uh, I mean, finding out your buddy got fired or, 
finding out someone got cancer or, you know, uh, instead of like, you know, sitting back and realizing, you know, you, you accomplished a lot. You, you shouldn't be having this conversation now. You know, yeah. I, I shouldn't, but I should, I should be blessed and, and, and appreciate the moments I do have. And, and, uh, you know, it's good to hear it because it, it makes you realize, you know, like you saying it makes me realize like, damn, you, you know, I should do it more. You know, it's always in the back of your head, but you just, it, it just slips through the cracks. You know, there's a lot of cracks in that brain of ours. You know I mean? it's, it's just built with cracks. It's just, it's just all cracks all the time. It's a whole bunch of waves all over the place. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about um, artistic movements and or artists that, have influenced you and in how either you go about your work or, you know, cause I, cause I think, you know, a lot of times artists are, and I, and I, and I put myself in the same conversation with thieves, with thieves in the gentlemanly sense. So I have you, oh. Of, oh, I like the way he does that. I'm going to steal that technique or how can I learn this from him? You know, I think a lot of the greats and whatever they do, you're learning something. Like if you watch boxers, how you throw this jab again, yeah. show me that. So what are some of the movements or the artists that have influenced you? You've taken bits away from them. Picasso said it best, man. Good artist copy, great artist steal. You know, uh, I've been inspired by uh, a lot of artists, man. Uh, Jack Kirby, you know, that, that whole comic realm. Jack yes. Kirby's my guy, man. That, that, dude, that dude's a legend. Um, Norman Rockwell, huge Norman Rockwell fan. Uh, uh, Dr. Seuss. Um, Dr. Seuss is my guy, uh, <laughs> Salvador Dali, you know, uh, those are, those are like my major, I yeah. guess, influences growing up. Yeah. And then, um, when it came to the streets, Swoon, Swoon is, God damn that woman. She is, she is amazing. And, um, and then there was an artist, uh, called Elbow Toe. He doesn't really do, uh, things in the street anymore, but. I remember being in Brooklyn uh, in my late teens, seeing a, a like this this beautiful drawing on a door, glued on the door, and it was like peeling off. And I was like, "Holy shit! You you could just glue paper to a door? Like you know you you don't? I didn't go to art school, man. I don't I don't know what you can and cannot do even until today. I just I just wing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so for me like seeing that that was that was like holy shit dude like man i would i would love to do drawings and glue them onto walls you know and then i used uh those two artists and then wk interact is another one um who had a lot of stuff up in brooklyn and the size of it like seeing things life size with paper glued on walls i don't know man that shit that shit changed my life it made me be like, oh wow, like I, I could do that. I could do like big drawings and, and glue them on walls, man. Maybe one day I'll do it. And um, I was still a graph kid at the time. And then once I got arrested at 20, I was like, oof, I wasn't really good at this anyway. So maybe <laughs> I should try something else. Yeah, like, where's and that then, paper uh, and that glue? <laughs> 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 and then I just I dabbled with like real small things because you don't you know you don't know uh, if it's gonna stick or if you like it you know so I, I started with like little things little little stupid birds and and things like that and then and then as as the time came I just kept like trying to like work a, like a, a theme or, or a body of work or something mm. that I could like push forward like the next step in my career and and this this series just uh came up in my head and and i was like oh man i'm gonna I'm play with this and and uh it's going on it's it's going on i think 11 years since since i've been doing it so wow yeah yeah longevity i, I love it i love to hear it yeah man so um long time so as, as we were kind of touching on like you know what the work is about it would make sense to talk about the, the creative process a little bit and um so I got some, I got like three questions related to that, to the process. I definitely got to ask you. Um, so within your process, um, and I'm sure people have asked you, can you describe your process? So whatever you want to describe in your process, feel free. But I, I really want to key in on these two areas. Uh, what is the most um, like that you enjoy the most, most enjoyable part of the process and the least enjoyable? Um, I, like for me, it's like gallery and street, right? Like, 
so sometimes like you got street specific things, you got gallery specific things. Uh, so for me, I, I would say like putting things up in the street. Mm-hmm. I love, I just, I don't know, man, that adrenaline rush. And like 95% of things I do is illegal. So that, that adrenaline rush is, yeah. is like, I don't know. It, it, it's great. It's hard to describe, but it's great. You know, it, it's, almost like a drug i guess uh it's my little drug and then um like creating a body of work uh i had a show um at paradigm gallery and like creating a a body of work Uh, the whole show was based off of immigrants that immigrant mentality Mm -hmm. uh being raised by by immigrant women uh, my mother being from cuba um like creating that body of work man was oof it, it hit me. It hit me so hard. Like I, I'm still suffering from depression from that shit. And and then the the hardest things uh, are like being in the street looking for a spot. <laughs> like I love doing it, but then like putting shit in. Oh man, I'm I have problems. I I'm like so crazy. I have OCD when it comes to like <laughs> like placement. Yeah, yeah. I'm all about placement. Um. And I love when, when people notice that about the work I put in the street. You know, I'm all about placement. Like, if there's 70 things on a wall, I ain't going to make it 71. You know, mm-hmm. I, I look for a specific spot to get that perfect photo. Because at the end of the day, that's all I got from this thing, that it took me anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to create. To just put it in the wall and, and for some idiot to come and rip it or or to write their name in it because they think they're cool, you know, yeah. whatever. But <laughs> for me, one of the one of the things that that's frustrating is like looking for a spot. Like, wow, that's that's crazy. And then, uh, and probably like creating a body of work. It is not. I love doing it, but it's so hard to come up with a a good concept that people could relate to. Yeah. Um, because. You know, it's easy to just be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to just do everything that's red. I'm going to do everything that's blue, you know, and say, oh, Picasso's blue series. It, it, it's it's very easy to uh, to come up with, uh, I guess, things that sell. I, people, you know, there's people who do that. There's people who uh, who get pigeonholed and, and they, they like doing whatever they want to do and they sell it a couple of times and they keep recreating and recreating and recreating the same image, the same image yeah. and mass producing and power to you. For me, um, I like creating things that people could relate to. Like I, I have, I have an interesting story and if I could create a body of work that goes with my story, you know, and, and I could be genuine and express myself and people could relate to it. Um, that, that means the world to me. You know, um, at the end of the day, I, I make art for me, you know, like it's, it's selfish, man. Like this is, this is all for me. Uh, yeah. if, when people appreciate it, it means the world. Cause like, um, being an artist at the end of the day, any type of art, you know, when I say artist, I just mean like painter or, or draw or whatever. Um, like if you're just a, a, any type of artist, man, it's, you're, you're selfish. Like this, there's no way to, you're doing it for yourself, man. It's, it's for you. It's for you first and foremost, and then yeah. any anywhere you get that love, man, it it's beautiful. I I definitely that definitely clicked for me right there because uh, I started thinking about. It. I was like, you know, there's some ego, there's some selfishness, and it's like I'm sharing these conversations that I'm so fortunate to have with folks with other people. It's not like I'm taking in a poll of questions. I'm answering, asking questions, or even as we talked about earlier, who do I want to talk to? It's like, who do I think I want to talk to? And I'm asking questions that I am curious in. And it's very, very selfish in that regard of, this is for me, if y'all like it. Wow. But also, this is for me. And, and you know, it makes me seem like I'm more interesting than I actually am. So thank you for being part of me, <laughs> sounding like I'm more interesting than I actually am. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so... Talk, tell me about any constraints that you you put within your work. And you were kind of touching on it where, you know, you're not kind of doing this sort of replicating. You're not doing this sort of I want to do this blue period or what have you. But what sort of 
constraints do you you put within your work from a macro sense like for me i i don't really engage too much in conversation with folks beforehand because i think it kind of can change the the flow of the conversation sometimes it's like oh i already know what this answer is going to be like and so on or at times i will forget my questions or just go off the cuff because i feel like i'm already a little scripted so it's like, well, let me do it in this way just to kind of shake it up sometimes. You know, I just don't want to feel like I'm being repetitive and it just I have like mailing it in. I don't want to do that. So what sort of constraints do you have or, or, or things that are part of your work and your process that, you know, you shake it up a little bit or you're like, I'm not doing this in this way? Uh, for me, anything goes, man. Uh, like I said earlier, man, like I, I taught myself this stuff, you know, um, I've gotten like little tips and, uh, you know, watched other artists do stuff and, uh, picked up some techniques. And, um, at the end of the day, I, I, I just, I just do what I feel. Uh, the, the paper thing was inspired, you know, being younger, seeing the, the paper glued to the street. So that, that gravitated me. And then like, when it comes to paintings or drawings, you know, it, uh, whatever's there, man. Is there acrylic paint there? I'm using acrylic, you know, watercolor, markers. Like any anything goes. Like I said, I was I was poor as a kid, man. I I'm down for whatever you want to <laughs> give me. You want you give me crayons, man. I'll make something with crayons. Uh, I, like everything goes. Um, I'll never I'll never be like no. I only work in this medium. You okay. Know, you you never know. Uh. The only medium I don't work in is, is oil. Um, oil's tough, man. It's, it don't dry that quite quick for me, you know, <laughs> and uh, I'll always wind up touching it and mess it up. So I give props to people who paint with oil. Um, but but any anything else goes. Uh, I love, I love like, there's nothing like getting a black book and just doing a drawing and coloring it with markers. You know, that, that to me just automatically, it's like nostalgia, it brings you back. Oh, yeah. to, to being a teenager, you know. Um, so for me, it's literally like a- anything goes, man. Like whatever's there is there. Um, I dig it. I'm, I'm still painting. <laughs> oh, man, this is crazy. I'm still painting with paint that I stole like 20 something years ago. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like uh, I had a buddy. I had a buddy who worked in AC Moore, man. And. He just said, bro, you can leave with a shopping cart. So I left with a shopping cart. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, shout out to my brother Hendrick. But uh, I so mean... for me, man, like, it's, it's whatever I got, man. Whatever I got, I'm, I'm going to make the most with it. Um, I'm going to do what I got to do. I hear you. I hear you. So I got I got two more real questions um, before we get into those rapid fire ones. And uh let's talk about anonymity a little bit um what are what are some of those benefits that you've experienced of like not too many people knowing you at a point and then once they know you like what what sort of changes came about because i i can say that like really firsthand you know like i said how long i've been doing this and then once people know it's like oh yeah you know overnight success it's like i've been doing this for 14 years and it's like you've known me for like the last year or something like that Oh my God, just out of the blue, you know? So tell me about that. Like when, you know, people didn't really know about you, but maybe knew about your work. And then when they knew about you, like what that, what that was like. <clears throat> That's interesting for, for me. Um, I, I don't like posting photos of my face or anything like that. Um, I don't, I don't mind if someone's to take a photo of me out and, and knows it's me and, and tags me in it. I'm not, I'm not petty like that. You know, I go by my name, so <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not really hiding that well. Um, but, but overall, like I don't, I don't like showing the world, like, hey, look at me, um, look, look at my wife, look at my kid. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not about that. Um, it, it helps, it helps sometimes uh, when you don't show yourself that much. I've been in situations where people will talk about you. Mm-hmm and not know you're that person, you know, um, which that's, that's kind of a trip. That's kind of a trip. Uh, cause you know, since I'm not constantly putting myself out there, um, that, that could be funny. That could be funny. This is a, a silly story. 
uh, a good a good friend of mine now. Um, she's like uh, she's like my little sister. Uh, she was doing a, a talk at Temple, mm-hmm. and she was just talking about me, not knowing I never met her. And she was just giving me all this praise and all these things. And I'm just laughing in the audience, like, oh man, this is hilarious. She has no idea I'm here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then after the interview, uh, someone was like, I think that's him. I think that's him. <laughs> and, and then when she found out it was me, she like, she freaked out. And it was, it was a, an awesome experience. Um, but yeah, I, it, it has benefits. I know, I know uh, a couple artists who like, they don't show their face for anything. Like, mm-hmm. uh, one of them from Philly, Kid Hazo. No one knows who he is. You know, he's he's, he's like he's like a uh, you know, he's like your your typical, I guess, uh, Banksy, right? No one no one knows who he is type thing. Uh, so that's that's Philadelphia's version. This artist, Kid Hazo. I know who he is, but it's it's <laughs> great that that we've been in situations, both of us, and people talk about him, and it's just like mm, I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, so, so it 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 does have its benefits for you not to be like uh, fully known, I guess. Um, yeah. But, but going by my name, I throw all that shit out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I go by a portion of my name, but uh, as I described to you earlier, I'm very noticeable out there in the streets. It's like, oh yeah, it's that ogre right there, and people say, oh yeah, it's the podcast guy. I was like, ah oh, man, shit, uh, boom. So it's not like I'm carrying around a microphone. Uh, yes, in the last day, the last week, I ended up doing this party, and I tried to wear my most like non artsy kind of kind of fit. Usually. You know, I kind of dress a certain way. Uh, it's all, I'm always wearing Carhartt. Let's just put it that way. So I was definitely wearing like the plaid shirt with the fitted, the fitted with a low brim, and, was, and with the with the stupid thick gold necklace on. It was like, is that is that no? Nah, that can't be him. And I was like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got this, this is the last real question I got for you. Um, I always like to get this take from folks. Um, what is how do you describe the the artist lifestyle like you know what is that for you what is your version of the the artist lifestyle um you know you'll hear people oh artists they're always late to things they're bad with money bop, 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 bop. <laughs> so you know that's that's pieces of it that people throw out there and you know always looking for funding and all of this this different stuff um what is your version or your perception of the artist lifestyle and how are you like living sort of the artist lifestyle? Um, oh man, I don't, I'm not sure I'm even doing that. Uh, <laughs> I, got a, I got a nine to five, you know, I got a mortgage to pay. Um, <laughs> Part of the artist lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, me, I, I guess I would say, uh, being able to, uh, create art full time. Like for me to wake up and create art and, you know, go to sleep and do it again and, you know, uh, kind of like eat, sleep, paint, you know, uh, that, that would be like the artist lifestyle for what I do. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that would be a, a dream come true. Uh, I hope to one day have that yeah. in the future. Um, but you know, I, I like, I like uh, I like steady money, <laughs> so I work that nine to five. Uh, Got to do it. Got to do it. It's a uh, peace of mind that I need. Yeah. Uh, I was I was homeless for like eight months. It was mostly it was mostly uh, by choice because I, I could have probably just used a little bit of money I had and and, and try to like put down a month and a half security deposit and, and like wing it to hopefully pay rent or maybe be late. Instead, I decided to just like, you know, bust my ass and, and uh, live on the street for eight months. Luckily, I had uh, friends with couches and floors to sleep on and uh, a shower uh, that I could take uh, in my sister's apartment and, and things like that, you know, put my shit in storage. But realizing you don't have something to go like home to per se, you know, like whether it's an apartment that you, you know, you call home, it's, it's your place. Right. Yeah. Um, not having that for eight months, man, was, was wild. And I would never want to put myself in that like tight 
situation again. Yeah. And it it could literally happen at the snap of a finger. You know, you could Thanos that motherfucker boy. Bam, everything's gone. You know, uh I, I've 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 been um I've been homeless twice, uh once as an adult and once as a kid. And you know, you have parents that they make sure you're not aware of like this is the situation. Yeah, yeah. But as an adult, just not having access to my stuff. You know, and moving from season to season and having to go like to the cube storage. It's like, man, I need a coat. What else do I need? And just Had to get summer clothes and storage yo, and then winter clothes yeah. and storage. That's just a trip, bro. And, and trying to <laughs> trying to figure it out. And you know, it wasn't like any sort of like, you know, crazy situation as much as I was trying to close on a house. And um I was just effectively homeless for a period of time. I was able to stay with my mom, but it's like I was staying there like like I just got out like I didn't have anything. I was like, damn, I ain't got none of my stuff. And some of those some of those showers, right? Some of those showers I was taking at the job. I was like, this is, you know, taking in the uh, we have a uh, gym at the job. And I was like, hey, I'm take the shower in here because I definitely didn't do it this morning because it was too cold and I don't have a jacket. <laughs> you get pieces of it. And it was just like it's very disruptive. So um I want to, I want to, I want to shift into these these rapid fire questions for you. Uh oh, uh -oh. no, 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 they're they're fun, they're fun, they're fun. <laughs> I think you're gonna enjoy. I think you're gonna enjoy them. Um, so you know, don't overthink them. Don't overthink them. Uh, so here's the first one: If you could be one character in a TV show, what character would it be? Oh man, woo! Uh, Waiting for something ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say I would be, uh, Walter White from Breaking Bad. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. You could give me one character. So, it would be Walter White from Breaking Bad. Uh, what is your favorite dessert? Oh, dude, come on. Anything. <laughs> Anything. I'm like a fat kid at heart. Um, <laughs> fav favorite dessert though, I ice cream. I, I love me some ice cream. I don't give a shit what the flavor is. Just nice. give me ice cream. I I got a I got a smile on my face. I mean, I I I I, I tear my desserts. I tear out cakes. Like, yo, let me get that red velvet. Let me get a tres leches, and let me get that um that German chocolate. Thanks. <laughs> that's that's the lamb or carrot cake. Carrot cake slaps. Um, who is your hero, comics or otherwise? Oh, oh man. Well, my mom, my mom, I would say my mom's a, uh, my hero. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. She, she did everything she possibly could, you know, being, being uneducated and, and uh, coming to this country at uh, 16 years old and, and having to uh, get thrown into the Bronx, uh, you know, trying to teach her kids everything she could, doing everything for them. Definitely, uh, definitely a hero uh, in my book. Yeah. And uh, for heroes, I love man Spider Man. I still hope I get bit by a spider and can turn into that motherfucking boy. I tell you <laughs> what, <laughs> it's like every time I get bit by a spider, I'm like, "Ooh, is this the one?" <laughs> I stick to the wall and shit. Yeah. Like, ah, shit, not just some. <laughs> no super strength. Fuck it. All right, maybe next time. <laughs> John Lugo across the Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so here's the last two. Uh I'm gonna save the I'm gonna save the best one for last, but I'm gonna ask you this one. What is your zodiac sign? Do you believe in the whole astrology thing? Uh, I'm a I'm a Leo. Uh yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Leo. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. I don't know. Um I don't I don't really I don't really uh know that much about it as in like who who's compatible with who and and what <laughs> what sign does what i know i know i got like a a lion to represent me uh the beard almost looks like a mane so there yeah, you go you know, other than that man i don't i i don't know much all i know is that walter mccallow would would uh would kill it bro with the astrology <laughs> game boy <laughs> You would kill it, boy. You I, I love that i know who walter mccallow is and Dude, i have i have the cape who he is, and you're mentioning you Come on, man. That's that's the goat right there. I've been out here looking for capes. So let's let's start right there. Firstly, <laughs> I I would be in a laundry mat. 
as a child. And if you try to speak when that dude was on TV, you would get slapped, not just from your mother, from everyone there. They would just line you up and slap you, telling you to shut up. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like That's great. You can't, you can't fuck with Walter, boy. Can't, so, he, he can't so, this, this is the last one I got for you. Um, what is your... Okay, you can only pick one. What is your favorite pizza topping? I know. It's tough. It's tough. Because uh, you're not far from the land of the dollar slices, so, you know. No, no. I'm, see, 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 it's crazy because I'm like, man, just give me, just give me, just give me a, just a cheese slice of pizza, boy. Just that, just that. That's like fine wine, you know. <laughs> there's all, there's all different types. There's all different types of, of pizza. You know, you get the dollar joints, you get the dollar fifty joints. It might be a little better quality, you know. Maybe they use that polio. Who knows? You know, maybe use the polio. you know, you don't know, um, man. But if I if I'm gonna do a topping, this is probably gonna be a little odd. It's probably gonna be a little odd. I'm gonna go bacon. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for I'm it. Go, I'm gonna go bacon. I'm gonna go bacon. Something. I see, cause I'm fine with just the cheese, but if I'm gonna, you know, yeah. I'm a, I'm a salt bay it up. I'm gonna <laughs> say, say let's throw a little bacon on, it. you know, let's let's get let's get let's get that bacon. I'm 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 a next tier kind of guy. Um, I mean, if a bacon is good, you know, I like a little smokiness, like a nice smoky, crispy bacon. But um, if I'm going non meat. If I'm going non meat, I got to go with like, you know, you know, good cheese, got to be good cheese in there, but like mushrooms. I, I love mushrooms. Yeah, see, I I only like the mushrooms that make me hallucinate. But other than that, <laughs> those can be on there too. I mean, <laughs> well, you see, then, then we got a pizza. Now you're, <laughs> now you're talking. Now you're talking. So, um, that's pretty much it for the, for the podcast and for the interview. And, um, I want to thank you. For, for being on this podcast. And two, I want to invite and encourage you to tell the listeners where they can check you out, your work, social media, website, all of that good stuff. The floor is yours. Well, well, first off, man, I want to say thank you for uh, wanting to talk to my crazy ass. I appreciate it. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, that that means the world to me. And um, other than me, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit about any of that social thing. You could... I guess look me up on everything. Uh, Sean, S E A N, number nine, Lugo, L U G O. Have fun. Whatever's, whatever's your, whatever's your cup of tea, you know, <laughs> or don't, you know, look, I'm, I'm fine either way. I appreciate it. And uh, I, I, I appreciate you more, man, for, for taking your time um, Absolutely. To, to interview me, man. It means the world for real. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, so for Sean Lugo, I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art, culture in and around your neck of the woods. You just got to look for it. Mm-hmm.